about business. That's like, that T Pain comment. You know, she's going off that T Pain comment. Yeah, right? like T Pain think- ranted. You, you saw the rant? Yeah, I saw the rant. Stop yeah. making the same business, everybody. Else. We already got babies. We got the baby. <laughs> But it's like that's that's how hip hop is. It just evolves into the next generation, and it just keeps transcending time. Like when you hear like current music, like with like rock and roll and like most pop music, it's usually stagnant. It's not that much change. But with hip hop, it just diversifies into like you get the you get like the '80s rap. Like, hey, get my body, I'm chilling in the cut, and then you'll get like the. In the nineties, you get like the big L's and like, like fuck all the glamours and glitz. I plan to get rich yeah. from New York. Never was a fan of the Knicks. Ooh. And I'm all about expanding my chips. Yeah. You mad? Everywhere you, where everywhere you are. So welcome everybody. I'll answer anything. Leave it in the comments. Leave it in the comments. <laughs> Leave it in the mother loving comments. Thank you all. Yo, wow. Up, yo yo's, we in the fucking building. Oh, we got nine up in here. Oh, shout out to all nine of you. Yeah. Shout hey, out yo. Jose, what's up? Hey, Jose. yo, nigga, you got to focus on that camera. <laughs> I'm tra- Introduce the podcast. Welcome, everybody. This is your boy, Richard Picasso, and this is What's Up, Everybody with Piggy and Gilly now. Hey, yo, what up? Yes, baby? we revamping this shit now. We revamping. We're revamping. Shout out to Kid H right here in IG Live. Woo, damn. Oh, look, he gets hype. He I'm gets happy, hype. man. Yo, look. I never had 10 people you know, in the lab before. You know how we got this happening, right? How it's we got raining this? outside. Yep. Everybody's fucking stuck at home. They yep. got scared of this tropical hurricane storm. Yeah. That was exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> right? And now they're at home watching us bum asses on camera. Yep. What up, y'all? Yep. 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 What's up, Yo, shout y'all? Shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody watching us on all cameras and yep. all angles. Watching and all us platforms. everywhere. Shout out to all 12 of you in this live right now, Instagram live. I never had that much in like pff, forever. So. Yes, as you know, you we're in. Go live more often. Yes, I gotta go more live more often. Like, damn, what the hell, man? Wait, oh, shout! He got the bottle up in here. Wait, look. Oh, we, yo, we on that president you make the announcement now. Since you, nothing, not officially, not right, officially. All right, all right, all right. My bad. Officially, I'll be I gotta. He's be a little. Look, he's he's yeah. the homeboy. I'm always overzealous. You like, I could keep a secret, <laughs> but not some good news. <laughs> <laughs> look, he was choking on it. Look, that's what she said. Hey, yo, what up, nigga? So how was your week, my brother? Anything productive get done? Well, this weekend, wow, man. Turn the your mic facing you? The light facing me. The mic facing you? Yeah, here you go. Talk to him. And mic facing me. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm right, already so kind of zooted because I'm already a little, I'm a little buzzed. Get... I get weak very easily. You don't even know, man. I don't understand how you get fucked up so easy. I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, it's good being a lightweight. And I'm a big like dude. It. It's like, how? But it's good being a lightweight. Like, being a lightweight and knowing you're a lightweight <laughs> is the best thing in the world. I envy those niggas that could take a hit of the blunt and be high. Or take a sip of beer and just be high. Like, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. Me, I got to go through a struggle. I got to drink the whole six pack. I got to smoke the whole blunt, and then I start feeling some, and then if I'm, hopefully I'm not having a good night. <laughs> like, you know yo. what I'm saying? Look, you struggling, you sweating over there. Yo, I don't know why, man. <laughs> <laughs> what they talking about on the gram? All right, funny. <laughs> so if you're on IG, right, look, think outside the box is laughing at me. Fat Joe, Cardi B, J-Star, oh, Proc 190 BS, oh, he's tagging like. Yeah, this nigga, my uncle always put oh, it in wow. at work. Wow, I see. Oh, My uncle's always putting Bruno that Yo-Yo's, work. he's like, who is that in front of you? <laughs> you mean this? This is my homegirl, Nina. That's my homegirl, Nina. It's my homegirl, Nina. She's bad as hell. She's single and ready to mingle, if you're wondering. If you're wondering. What do you mean she's single and ready to mingle? Don't be giving up your chick. No, I got other chicks, man. I'm, I'm, that, I'm that dude. I'm that dude. Look, everybody knows about this. Everyone does. You know it. Everyone knows it, so... All right, just to, just before we really actually get into any topics, as you can see, we're trying like a whole different, not really a different format. All we're doing is just adding an extra camera so we could do Instagram lives too. So that way we can hit like four instead of three. So now you can see me on Facebook, Twitch, uh, YouTube, and Instagram, you know, so you can definitely interact with us a lot more. Shout out to Live Elise. She says, Fu Mamucho! Hey, yo, what up, y'all? So we're, we're just doing our thing. We have a lot of topics for you today. Today we're going to be talking about the dropping of Aaliyah's album after like God knows how long, one in a million. Which very pretty crazy. Very pretty landmark. Crazy we're going to talk about Kendrick Lamar, you know, Pops, like leaving TDE, and saying that. St- I still hit with the, I, who cares about Kendrick Lamar? <laughs> we're going to be talking about Joe Biden with Afghanistan and all the crazy shit right there. So there's going to be many other topics. And most importantly, we're going to be talking about friendship. 
Oh man, you want to start at the top? No, we can. Right. You want to start a friendship or you want to lead into something else? I, I would love to start off a friendship. I would love to start off a friendship. So I was I asking. Start um, a friendship. I was asking yo yos on the way o- over here. Um, so I got into a little debacle with with a close friend of mine, right? So I was asking him on the way over here, how much, how much do you take from like a friend before you notice it's the 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 situation maybe becoming toxic? You know, like how many reckless nights can you have? How many people around you can you hurt being friends with that person? You know, um, how many times can you and that person do bad things to one another? You know, before before you're like, yo, maybe you and I need to call it quits or give some space to our relationship. You know what I mean? As friends, because every time you and I get together, we always fuck some shit up. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, asked, I, I that's the question I presented you with because I was, I was so, curious. So what specifically know, was the question? Like, well, basically, how much can you take from a friend before you can't have that friend no longer around you? Like, in my youth, I'll be honest, like, I've always allowed people to hurt me a lot just so I can maintain a friendship. Really? Because at that point in time, like, when I was, like, in my high school years and, like, early college years, I felt like if I didn't have friends, I wouldn't be able to, I'll be lonely. Like, I'll be by myself. And... This is around the time, you know, I'm, I'm trying to come out of my shell, trying to learn new things about mm-hmm. the world, like kind of be like venture out into like, you know, mingling, like knowing people like, hey, I shouldn't be the only one that knows myself. Other people should know who I am, too. So around that time, I didn't really have that many friends, even in high school to begin with. It was very select, a few that I still interact with to this day. Okay. And, and I felt like there were a lot of grimy stuff that they would do. Not a lot of not like grimy to a point where it's like, oh, did you continue like, being their friend is the question, though. I did for a certain amount of time. And then I, and then ultimately, they ended up leaving as I grew older because I realized they kept giving that same toxic toxic energy to me and they would give it to everybody else, too. So it was like spread. It was like a virus inside of me. And I just like, you know what? I don't know why I allowed this to go for so long because, you know, you get those moments in life. You have like an epiphany about somebody. Like, why do you allow, like, this person you know is bad for you in your life? Why do you continually let them be in your life for whether it be, a, whether it be like a close guy friend or a girl or a girlfriend or anything well, like that. You know what it is? Is because I, I, sometimes I be feeling like you know, love is the like I don't know when you, when you, I'm not dead yet. No. And you know, yo, <laughs> shout out to my because we we've almost killed each other a couple of times. Now that I say that, so God Look. bless that. Yeah, we all, we it, definitely it, have. It, ignore that, please. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Being honest, like yo, me, me and my me and my best friend have done some reckless fucking things. I don't know about you guys, but. I'm a straight boy. I'm a man when it comes to this shit. Like, I the type to hit the wall, the fence, doing 100 miles an hour and do it again. <laughs> you know, like, so we've, you know, we've, in this case, we got into, we always get into debacles and arguments, me and my friend. We always, we always get into really heated debates. I, sometimes I tell him, stop the car, I'm getting the fuck out, like, because I'm walking the fuck home. Mm-hmm. I, you know, things happen, right? And in which case, we really got, I know I'm a button pusher. Mm. I'm a dick. I'm a dick by every standard of the measure. You know, I'm a button pusher. So... I can understand when somebody is not in the right state of mind to be dealing with having their buttons pushed. Mm-hmm. So maybe, I won't lie, I'm, I'm a provoker of a lot of things as well when it comes to our relationship as friends. So now, whatever action he therefore takes, we've, we've tussled before, we've wrestled before, we get into heated arguments before. We have not yet to damage one another's property up until this point. So now, when something like that occurs, right? When you cross that boundary and you damage somebody... You, now, when you see it, it starts to affect, like, how, I mean, it, gets, it doesn't affect how we, me and him move as individuals, but in our friendship, yeah, you know? Now, I guess we have to be a little bit more cautious. We know after 12 o'clock between us, nothing good's happened after the second six-pack. You understand? Well, like, are we talking 12 p.m. or 12 a.m.? 12 a.m. B. We, yo, oh, if it was 12 p.m., that's a real toxic shit. <laughs> if nah, you, nah, and you nah, fucked me, up at nah, 12 p.m.? Me, 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 no, me and my G are known to go to 6, 7 in the morning. There's no reason you should be out 6, 7 in the morning drinking. I will I will second that. No, that Unless you're in the studio that, putting in work. That's how you end up on intervention. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen those interventions? They'd be like, I, I start drinking the moment I wake up at five fifteen before work, and then as I'm driving to work, I'm drinking, and I sit down at my desk, yeah, I start but drinking. A, but that, but th- those are people that are dependent on alcohol. We 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 have a good time. We just use the alcohol to induce that good time. 
<laughs> you understand? Like, there's never any really qualms. It's just our heated arguments are always over probably progression, working hard, and we probably just really want what's best for each other as individuals. But the way of expression is just totally different. That's why I got to thinking throughout the whole week. I'm like, mm. you know, and bullshit. I was just with the nigga two days ago drinking a six pack. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, I'm talking about <laughs> shit. I love my nigga. Don't get me wrong. I love my nigga. But we we both had to have a conversation about it because as bad as he feels about him doing the, an action to me is as bad as I feel about any action I've ever committed towards him and me even pushing his buttons to get that far. Mm. So it's something that was recognized between us as men and mm. friends. And we just had to be better from it. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's why I asked you in the car where you yes. place... People that do bad, not necessarily do bad, when they don't, don't do bad things on purpose. Yes. It's like... It hurts. You know what I mean? It bothers. It's, it's like, when I got older, for me, it's like I kind of had to learn to cut off people, like, more instantly. Like, instead of giving that whole, give you a second chance. So I was very, as I grew older, it's like I had to be very selective of who I let in. Because I'm a very closed off person, believe mm -hmm. it or not. Like, it may look like I'm out there all the time, but... Most of the time, at least 95% of the time, I'd rather just be home, not going anywhere, not interacting with anybody. So I don't get hurt too as much as most people do because I stay the fuck home and not worry about other people's business. But the thing with me, what I learned just That's being like... a crazy like, bar, though, to say, you know, that, like you stay home to be sh not, not sheltered, but to keep yourself, to keep yourself um, protected. Yes. And it's like the... The more, because I'm a very understanding dude, like I'll hear everybody's problems, every situation. So it gets to a point now where I'm like so removed from everybody's issues and stuff mm -hmm. that most people have a need to just hit me up and just tell me about all the shit they're going through. Because you are so removed from it, like a therapist would be. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I guess they just see like, oh, they could confine to me about a lot of the issues they have. And then they just like pour out all these emotions, crying in front of me. Being angry about somebody or something at me, and it's, and I'll just like, look, everything's gonna be all right. Like, just remove yourself from the situation, and to be like, oh, thank you, thank you so much. Like, I gotta learn to be more like you. It's like you don't have to be like me; just be better than me. I guess you know what people don't understand either. Um, you get you get you get attached. You get attached to what you're aware of and what you know, right? You get attached to everything that you you're familiar with. So. You know, to to not have the attachment, it's like, like I got friends that won't talk to me at all, mm. like at all. That mm. I look, I just had friends that won't talk to me at all. Think about that oxymoron. <laughs> who's the moron? Me. You feel me? Yeah, who's the ox? <laughs> they, they, but they knew exactly what they had to do mm. in between us to, yo, they can't talk to me no more. You feel mm. me? That's why I guess when people make mistakes around me and admittedly say, yo, I made, I fucked up, my bad. And I know it wasn't intentional. I do make the judgment to keep them there. And I know that's offering more opportunity to bad shit to happen. Because that's why certain people haven't kept me there. Mm. Bars. <laughs> Talk to him, Rich. Bars. Yeah. So, Yo, so what you think about Robin, dude? So, I'm going straight wait, to Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. We, got, we, got, we got to move in this really slow. All right? Top at the top. And we got to build this up. Slow. Yes, we have to go slow, man. We got, we got people in the comments leaving stuff. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> like, what the hell? Because, you know, we got IG. Because we got to make sure we give to the people what they want. So <laughs> appreciate uh iMart, iMart official. Yo, you you are Yo, already shout out G Artificial. Oh, you know what this is, dude? Yeah, of course, of course. I know my All man right, Artificial. So, yo, you already He's actually G. a dope artist. I'ma hit you soon. Gotta make moves with the wife. And our answer is when they keep breaking boundaries, you set. Can't expect people not to test you, but it's your job to set boundaries. W. Who was that? That was artificial? No, that's iMart Official. Yeah, that's artificial. I am artificial. Oh, okay. All right? Oh, yeah, I, I get artificial. it. Yeah, I'm stupid. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, hey, oh, hey, I'm Mart. Shout out to my man, artificial. You heard Rich just read his quote. Yo, shout out to you. We got cameras right. on IG live. Shout out to Ivy Lee, who said no. Now he's, he's always jumping. He's the dude that's always jumping. You see the photo shoot, um, IG, um, the the group chat that I got opened up between all of us. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that's always jumping in there with like some inspirational shit. Mm. I, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. He's that guy that's always jumping in there. Shout out to no drop them. Wait, sorry, I'm stupid. Start the Eve Elise. Eve, my cousin. Eve Elise. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, drop them and keep it pushing. Chase a bag, not friends. Yeah, nah, mm. facts. It's not about chasing. It's about noticing who's who's there when you're at the top. Uh, oh, shout out to Harley Queen. Once you think it's time to maybe cut them off, then it's time to maybe cut them off. No. no that's what you've been saying. Yeah, you know what I mean? When, it, when, it, when it's time for somebody to go, it's time for somebody so, to go. Artificial against us. True friends support good behavior. Crabs in the bucket let you fuck up.
I don't know, B, but I'm a fuck up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shout out to, yeah. shout out to, you know, there's oh, something shit. about our podcast that I really like. You know, I, 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 I've learned from my other like podcasts and things I've done. Honesty is the best policy, right? So when I come here, <laughs> can, nothing I can do would be totally honest, right? Uh, I'm never, I'm never always right in the situation. It has nothing to do oh, no. with right or wrong. You was asking, me, it you comes was... to trying to figure out a resolution amongst people. <laughs> oh, somebody asked you like the question, question. Oh, it's from. What? Was, uh, from Nova. What? Are you going to participate in Volume 3 of 16 Dead? That's for you, Rich. <laughs> That's for you, Rich. Yo, while we here, while, while, while he just asked you that, yo, shout out to the 16 Dead Committee. EP2 just dropped. Richie Yo-Yo's is a part of it. Yes, Apologies I'm on too. that I haven't given it the proper attention to let you guys know. It just dropped last week. And like, yo, yep. everybody, go check it out. It's on all digital platforms, all DSPs. 16 Dead Committee, Volume 2. I'm on it. Richie Yo-Yo's on it. Yeah, shout out to Panda. Jose on it. Jam Young Panda. is on it. Mark Allen's on it. Two Lines on it. Physic Music Share is the on live it. Share the if you can. If I, if I forgot anybody that's on it, my apologies. All right, so. Kelly Grins is on it. My bad right. going in right now. I know. You should give it, yo, you give me a PR before we get into robbing being bisexual. Yo, yo, Richie Yo-Yo's. Richie Yo-Yo's my man Physic. It's a, it's, a, it's a vote for who got the best song on the EP. So if you guys... Follow the 16 Dead Committee page. Listen to the EP. If you guys, who got the best verse? Who got the best oh, song on there? Because Get to the Money's dope. Get so, to the Money. You know what I mean? You guys want to hear the track that he's on? Go look at go look at 16 Dead Committee Volume 2. That's and fucking get on the competition, you fucking rappers. Stop fucking playing with me. Nobody going to bounce Bowser out. You heard? I'm looking like Kobe in the paint with the 16 Dead Committee. I don't know what y'all doing out here. Um. Yeah, so... um. <laughs> Robin is bisexual, apparently. Who? Robin. Oh, you want to get into fucking? You, that's what you had to get to. I'm just getting to what you want to talk about. Yo, son, this shit kind of bugged me out. Like, so not it, in a bad way, but my, you know what I told you? My barber, my barber, me and my barber used to call each other Batman and Robin all the time, right? Memo. And after after this news came out, I had to inform my barber I could no longer be Robin. Don't ever call me Robin again when I call you. I'm not calling you Batman no more. <laughs> mm, is that bad for Do you? you think do do you think? Well, I was I said it as a joke. I mean, I could honestly care less what people think, but it'd be you know it's a funny fucking joke with, when me and him always call each other Batman and Robin, and mm. now Robin and out of nowhere in twenty twenty one with this woke culture come out being a fucking a bis. I, I, do you think that's an agenda? Hmm. Do you think Robin being bisexual is an agenda that they're just dropping now, or do you think the writers I mean, legitimately? But most comic books that ever came out during like something that was like a political time, like World War Two. You are right. You, I didn't even think about when this dropped. That's a big deal too. It came out during a political time. Where yeah, like you weren't warranted. Like civil like rights that. movement. That like DC and Marvel were dropping fucking crazy heroes for you know. People in the civil rights, people during the LGBT times, during like you know World War One, World not World War One, but like World War Two, you know the Vietnam War, you know like all the types of like different like political events. You had to make like a hero for it. That's what they always do. So now during this time, I guess they feel like you know people are identifying themselves like and finding like the sexualities. Hey, let's let's just advance like uh, already a superhero that's already been through. Like probably a, like well at least like at least ten or twelve different multiverses, different variations of him, and introduce well, this person. Do you think they they made a, do Do you think they made who was the original Robin? It was Dick, right? Dick. Who was that? What was his name? Let me look it up real quick. I think the original Robin's name was Dick something. Dick something. Yeah, Dick. I know, right? Go figure. Give him all that dick and something. Original Robin. Let's see who the original Robin. Was. Robin. Original. You can ask anything if you're in the live, but make, please make sure that you what share the name? live. I what appreciate it. Dick Grayson. Oh, yes. Dick, Dick Grayson. Grayson. That's, that's how Dick something. Now, yes. my question is now, did they make every Robin in the, in the multiverse bisexual? Or did they make the, just the original Robin from like the great Scott? You know, that's that's the question. Because mm. I guess that, that, that would ultimately answer. That would be the truth. For me, if he's just been like that from jump, then it's the truth. But because if, remember, like with Robin and in, in like the original ones, he he goes off to be, I think like either two different superheroes. Like Nightwing was one yeah, of them, Nightwing. and then he ended up one and one he was with Batgirl, and then another one he was with Starfire. From what I remember, 
So, but he was Nightwing and all of them, wasn't he? No, he was also some. He, he ended up being. I think one he just stuck with being Robin. Yeah, yo, any comic book heads want to jump in and give us some Robin yeah, knowledge? Any co- <laughs> any anybody that knows like DC comics or those origins of Robin, please let us know in the comments. Even on IG Live, please let us know because you know obviously I didn't collect on comic books. My grandpa was collecting Playboys. Anyway, <laughs> do you think? But do you think that um, I mean it don't change nothing for me. No, not that it changes anything for you, but look, there's a I'm gonna pay I'm gonna play devil's advocate here, okay? Um, there are a group of people, uh, and I'm just uh, not that I'm speaking a specific for them. group. No, now I'm speaking for them, but there are there are there are people that think that um, how do you say this? Like uh, the things that we see on TV, the things that we see on TV influence correctly, correct? Mm-hmm. So like if. Let's say you take a child that doesn't know left or right, up or down. He has to be taught left or right, up or down. Now, some people would argue that showing children um, homosexuality, showing children, <clears throat> showing children—I know, I just—I I know, showing children things to deal with their sexuality in general, even their 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 general, even boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't think that, I don't think the identification of boyfriend should, and girlfriend should be known to in any kid shows. I don't think in any kid shows Why? what Why that? Why? I, I don't because I think that's how you influence a little eight year old and nine year old boy trying to kiss each other under a cover playing house. You understand what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't think that I, I think that kids shouldn't shouldn't be introduced to those type of things until they're like hmm. twelve, thirteen and be able to talk about hmm. it and be taught about it. Not on TV. You take a group of kids watching something on TV that's teaching them Whatever, whatever it's teaching them. Let, mm. But let's say it's tell, say let's say it's vulgar and it's teaching them sexuality in some sense. You mm. can't have that in a fragile mind till they. I would say at least to the age of twelve, thirteen, where they can honest, where their bodies are developing and they're asking why. Yo, why am I growing hair? Mm. Why am I? Why do I got this little sticky stuff at the end of my pee every morning? You know what I mean? Like when when kids start going through body changes, then I think you can introduce them to the mm. as to why. But you don't think it's too young sometimes these I mean, tv shows i like, mean you got you got also remember especially with like like i didn't think they had to say that Pun- spongebob was gay put it that way no they didn't even say he was gay they say he was bisexual no they didn't say i forgot they say he was they didn't say he was gay or bi or nothing they, i think they say he was like asexual or some shit asexual but the, even that rich you don't have to announce that you you, you he could keep that he's <laughs> a funny sponge What's the, you know? That's my point. Like, why? But why that, that's just corporations trying to be with the times and try to prop it off of the, you know, the LGBT so times. Agree, so, what, what's, where do you stand on it? Is it necessary or unnecessary? I mean, it, uh, again, you got, you're gonna have a five. You're gonna have a five. You're gonna have a four, a two, I mean, four year, five year old kid, right? I mean, you're I watch, gonna look up the origin of SpongeBob on his fucking tablet, and then one of the tabloids that might come up on SpongeBob is that he's asexual, I mean, and now you got a six year old saying. I mean, Daddy, what the fuck is asexual? <laughs> I mean, I watched a lot of different uh, tricks commercials. I never thought about going in the forest to find a rabbit with cherry, like with cereal in his head. Like, oh, I gotta get that. He got cereal. <laughs> valid point. Valid point. Valid point. I mean, I guess so. I just, I just feel like you ever gave a bird cocoa puss and he just waited to say it? <laughs> like, don't can't you kill him? Probably. Well, that's with rice. No. When you feed a bird rice, you kill him. Not cocoa it, puffs. No, you try? <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to funny. catch you out there. <laughs> it, it's like it's like when you play fucking video games and you play Call of Duty, you take all that shit. I know you don't have to go about it and do it. I totally get your example. I told you, even when you look at like most things in teens, like like sex, homosexuality, like LGBT, it's, it's even, always I been. I think sexuality in general is, is it's, it's always been there. Yeah, I know, but I I find I listen. I've been molested. So it's sense it's a sensitive topic for me, right? Because you think about this. If I've been molested, right, when I was four or five years old, the person that did that to me had some knowledge about sex, right? So that means that that what however they saw it, you it, it it's a slippery slope and a stem. And that's my point, that when you introduce sexuality to kids and they're not able to ask their parents about it, they're going to try it on their friends, and they're going to try it on younger kids, and they're going to do, because you introduced it to them and they're curious and they don't want to know. My bad that my, I think like that, but that's because I've been victimized. Mm -hmm. That I think that sometimes introducing sexuality to kids at a young age can be super damaging because they don't know how to put it into action. 
Hmm. Nigga, there's some 20 year olds that don't know how to put it into action. Oh, no. <laughs> there's some fucking 30 year olds that don't know how, you know what? They oh. become rapists because they Got don't it. know how to deal with that. You know, that's my, that's my point that I think we need to be more responsible with the way we introduce to children. Hmm. What they like. I mean, I I think that's also why you have like these newer cartoons that are trying to mm-hmm. incorporate a lot of LGBT mm-hmm. like shows, so they can try. Full to disclaimer: I have none against none of this shit. I love it. I fuck it. It is what it is. I just I'm all about children, and I'm a child. I'm I'm children of the corn, bitch. Like I've been I've been I've been there as a victim. So I feel like I am allowed to go ahead and say mm. maybe if that person didn't go through that, they wouldn't have did that to me. So I think about resolutions. I could give a fuck what you like, right, but children don't deserve to be put in certain situations like that. Shout out to Measure Five. He says y'all get in deep. Pause. Yeah, nigga, you Damn already G, know. I, feel your pain. I, I carry, I carry my, I carry myself the same way. That's how you get the same honesty about things. That's and that's you know, like I say, full disclaimer. I never want anybody to think that I come from a place of hate speech or anything like that. No, not propaganda. It's straight honesty from my own situations that I've been in, and I would like to. Know what my friend Rich, how he looks at it, how you guys look at it. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but the only way you can go ahead and have something to say against what I'm saying is if it's happened to you before. Because you can't tell a victim not to feel like, like one. It's a, like for me, I can't really put myself in that place because I've Speaking never of been. Victim, B, hmm. What? Because we all, it's, it's right on brand and on topic. What'd you think about this R. Kelly and Aaliyah shit? <sighs> And and we'll open with the nasty That's fucking... just to get into the well, good part yeah, of it. Yeah, well, well, good. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll open up with the yeah, nasty because we're just to, just to segue because the, I want to get off that topic. Yeah, because we did. We said we're gonna talk about it. We said we're gonna talk about it. So, feel me? Yeah, look at his face. You you uh, get his face on camera because mine should, mine just gets angry at the fact that we should be more responsible with what we teach children. In 10, 20 years, they're the future, and the last thing you want is fucking people running around with just. Unaware of who they really are because they were brought up on this propaganda for other people's agendas because other people as older people want to influence generations and generation in the way they want to. It's just fucking all out of bug. I smoke too much weed for this shit. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, R. Kelly, Aaliyah, uh, what you think about right, this so, wedding certificate? So if many of you don't know or probably have figured out, like there was something this week that said that it was actually confirmed that R. Kelly was married to Aaliyah during that time. Yeah, there was always yeah. speculation. There was like never no actual definitive proof. There was like leaked, allegedly leaked documents throughout the years. But now it's like officially confirmed uh-huh. that apparently he was really married around the time she, she was 15 and he was 27, which is like, what the fuck? Like, especially in the early 90s, like, my, my, my bro, bro. Nah, Yo, but nah, I, fam. I, I'm not know, with that. We all know Kelly was practicing nasty culture from fucking. I mean, he's been doing it since jump, before, during, and after Aaliyah. So shit. Yeah, like uh, you know, but my whole thing is is that you know they they what they always said that people you know it takes for one person to commit a crime that's very good. You know, it takes when you're in the industry a dozen people know about you committing excuse, excuse me that crime. Mm-hmm. So yo, they all knew this was going on, and they just said. You know what I'm saying? It's, they all knew this was going on. I don't it's understand. It's the industry. I don't understand. It's just the industry. The fucking music industry is a monster. Yo, make sure y'all send me a bad bitch with a red bow if y'all gonna do some crazy shit like this to Where me. Where would yo. the red bow be? I don't know, B. <laughs> my fucking mouth. <laughs> all right, that'll be hard to, that'll be hard to Wait, rap. I, I don't fucking know. But yo, that's ridiculous, man. Her 17 years old, getting married to... How old was R. Kelly? He was like 27 at the time. I think it was old. I think it was already pushing 30 in the early 90s. Because right now, I think he's like like 50-something. Like, he, it's crazy, man. And they're still, he's still trying to plead to get the fuck out. Of course. Why wouldn't you? But he, he testifies about the single. Yo, uh, and, and look, that's how he got snitched out. R. Kelly's tour manager. You fucking snitch. Mm. You fucking snitch. Why'd you snitch on him, bro? No, it's right. He, he was just doing the right thing. I'm not trying to condone like oh don't don't snitch. There's sometimes you just have to snitch or just to get this shit off your chest because you don't want this shit living rent free in your head. <laughs> I believe R- look, R- I believe it's snitching. R- Tell everybody. Manager, former tour manager. I'm telling. Testifies about. I know your social security. I'm telling that too. To if I know you, if I know your parents. She was 15. See, if they're 15. 15. 15. Get the fuck out of here, you nasty. Barely a sophomore in high school. 15. He wow. 
Like she haven't even fully, she's not even a fully developed woman. Like her vocals are still changing. And he was 27. You 20, 27. Told you 15 to 27. 15 year old. Yo, I don't understand, yo. I don't understand. How did, how did y'all let this man do this shit for so long? How did y'all let this man do this shit for so long? What? Because his mom he, was telling him no. That's actually a good note. Yo, he actually hit that pretty fucking good. You heard that shit? You heard that shit? Did you hear that shit? He actually hit that note really fucking good. <laughs> No, uh, you better clip that. Clip that yeah. shit. <laughs> Hit that real good. I don't, want, I don't want to be associated with that nasty yeah. bastard. <laughs> you shit. Yeah. Shocked me. Yeah. It's like, yo, let's get this auto tune out, man. Come on. Don't even stop me. All you bitches that said I couldn't sing. <laughs> Bro, that was really good. No, yeah, I'm shocked. Yo, like, watch, yo, watch your daughters, yo. Watch your daughters, please. Watch your daughters. Care, care for your daughters. daughters. Watch your daughters. Know where they're daughters. going. Know where your daughters are going. Know their friends. Yo, put up. Make sure. I don't give a fuck what your daughter's friends are. This shit gets me hot. I don't give a fuck. When she says, no, I won't put my location on, bitch, you ain't going outside. And I'm telling them, move out. Move out because I won't deal with it. That's how I feel. Like, if you want to act like a grown adult, then be an adult outside my house. Don't be an adult in my house, correct? Mm. There is no way that it's a child, a kid, should have boyfriends and girlfriends and... What are you doing? What are you doing? Even allowing a, your 15 year old as a mom and a dad to get close to a 27 year old man. This is Industry. crazy. Industry. Yo, Industry you ever don't give a fuck. Netflix special, Abducted in Plain Sight? No. Yo, this dude tells this little girl, he kidnapped, he, this dude gets close to a random family, right? He gets close to a random family and then he winds up kidnapping the little girl after knowing the family for a year. Throws her in a bus, ties her up, puts a recording on, of, and on the recording it says aliens are going to come take over the planet unless you have sex with the guy. Hmm. The girl was like 12. She was manipulated and kidnapped. She fucking believed mm -hmm. it and went with it. You know, like, kids' minds are fragile. Very. What are you doing as a parent to allow this kid not to be, ah, fucking. This world is crazy. Yo, yo, like, rest in peace, Aaliyah. Yeah. Go to some good shit, B. Her album. Talk right, to you. you know, despite all the dark shit going on with that, Talk the only glimmer of hope out of, well, not hope, really. The only glimmer that really came out this week for Aaliyah is that we got to, she got, she was able to. Released her sophomore album or her back in 1996, One Talk in a Million. Talk One a, a landmark album that featured great production by Timbaland and Missy Elliott. Mm -hmm. You know, but for Pate's letter, if your girl only knew, and of course, you know, One in a Million. Mm -hmm. You know that that album, like 1996. I mean, I was eight years old at the time when that came out. Wow. I was a young buck. And I remember, like you know, seeing on MTV like the video for One in a Million when she's like on the car. Like doing her thing, and then you know, four page letter, mm -hmm. and, and watching like Timbaland doing his thing. He was really on the come up because also that year, Genuine came out with the Pony song in '96, so that was like also. So you know, for it to be hold me on hold because of a fucking asshole uncle from background that she was under, for it to be released 20 years and it's just something because they've been, they've been talking for. God knows how long. I remember even before, like while I was in, like in high school, they were talking about releasing it. Like before, like streaming services and LimeWire pretty much fucked everything up for yep. all the all the you know music, like all the labels and shit. They didn't fuck it up for us. They fuck it up for us. Like DJ but Drama was running these streets. If you remember the DJ Drama years when they really had the Gates of Girls mixtapes in the mid two thousands, that was the golden era of mixtapes. Yep, and he's still doing it. Still doing this shit with the Gangsta Girls, but. Mm -hmm. Off topic with that, you know, for this album, this album was definitely uh, a very beautiful album for like you for introduction heard? working with Timberland and Missy. Yeah, you heard it. Yeah, of course I heard. I, I, That's I, all I've been playing since the drop Friday. Yeah, see, I, I came up I, like I heard of Aaliyah. I know Aaliyah. No bash on Aaliyah. She's fucking great. It's fucking. I I never really. She resignate. She didn't resonate with me though. Like, I don't know certain certain um my ears. My ears only resonate with certain um like um with powerful voices. Mm. She had a very soft voice. Yes, as it was, a female, it was she wasn't like a high note. Yeah, I like, Mariah I like, Carey type I like, singer. I like Whitney. I like I like I like I like I like power. Like, you want the I octaves? Like, I like Stevie Nicks. You like the? I, ah! I like I like that. I like that power. You you never that? Ah! But she made great music though. She was a beautiful woman though. Like, oh yeah, great dancer. Mm -hmm. Like that soft. I think that's what kind of did for me. Just her voices being so soft, and she stood out from like all the artists at that time that were trying to hit all these high notes and crazy shit. She was just like, 
Look, and we're we're gonna be doing like this. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, it was it was beautiful. Uh, oh, Meja says R. Kelly was violated by his aunt or something like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I if I believe so, like I saw that documentary. You know, I don't, I don't, I know hurt people hurt people. I keep saying this shit. It's 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 the truth, man. Like, and it's because half the time when people get hurt, it's not like it's not like somebody did something to you, right? And then the very next day it gets addressed. Mm-hmm. You live with that shit for a little while. And that if you're a kid, it's even harder to understand, you know? But like Rich said, you know, you don't have, you, you just because you see the tricks rabbit over there fucking on, the, doing his shit, you ain't got to go follow it. You know, you do have a choice to make at the same time. You don't, you have a, like, I don't know, man. It's really hard to judge. What if you can't help it? And then what do you do with those people that say, I can't help it? What do you do with those people that say, oh, I can't help it. I'm this way. I can't help it. What do you do with them? You let them keep walking around and living and you, oh yeah, oh, you can't help it. It's cool. Mm. It's, it's, it's slippery, right? Very slippery. It's slippery because, you know, half of me, and I know I'm a, I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm real, I know I'm going to get shot one day. Thank you. That's why I'm not famous. Straight up. Because, yo, that's kill, why I'm not famous. Nigga, kill them all. Kill them all. If there's a pedophile, you know there's a pedophile, kill them. Like, mm. why you, not us, but like in general, people like, that do bad things don't deserve like, to why be you in give, life. Why you give life in prison? Like, no, kill him. No, 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 kill him. Why are you going to give a pedophile life in prison? He likes getting raped in the ass. What are you, what are you doing? Like, kill him all. If he, if he likes hurting people, you hurt him back. I you believe know, in eye for an eye. And, and then, you know, and then that's a slippery slope. Because what if you got a 15-year-old kid, right? 14-year-old kid, 13-year-old kid, and he's killing birds in the back of the house, right? He's killing birds and killing animals and killing cats and killing dogs. And he's, you see him sometimes, you catch him, he's doing weird shit to himself. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then you don't do nothing because that's your kid. You love your kid. You love your kid. You, don't, you try to get him help, but he don't get no help. You don't, you don't really think nothing about it. And then one day you got Jeffrey Dahmer. You know what I mean? One day you got Jeffrey Dahmer, and that's my point. Like you let a bad seed grow. You let, but son, what, but what happens if you give the seed bad water to begin with? Hmm. You can't be a bad parent, show a kid bad things, and then ask why your kid turned out to be bad. Hmm. It's come, you know. That's why it's up to us to be better. To, if, even if it's not your kid, set an example. Just like when we put these videos up, we put the you see how fast kids come to you seeing you yo yo. You do mm-hmm. something for them, my nigga. That last week when we went to that rooftop performance that we didn't even get into, yo, we, mm-hmm. you know, last week when we did that, you you destroyed that for them. You you, and mm-hmm. you got a following from a fucking from a great person off of it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, shout out to her. Shout out to wasn't it? Kids, Rena. Though. South Arena, she's dope. You went through the kids, though. Yep. You know, you went through the kids, and I, I believe, as corny as it's going to sound, kids are the future. Mm-hmm. Yep. You, you have to have them, you have to nurture them and take care of them right or else. Mm-hmm. They turn into the Jeffrey Dahmers. They turn into the Rich Kuklinski. They turn into Ted the Bundy's. They, what? Ted Bundy's. They turn into the Ted Bundy's. They turn, you know, they turn into fucking the, the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. Son of Sam. Son of Sam. They turn into these niggas when you don't fucking, they turn into the R. Kelly's. When you don't go ahead and you no nurture these kids right and you want to beat them and you want to torture them and put them down, they turn into these fucked up individuals. And then you want to go ahead and say, why my kid? But I love him though. No, he couldn't have did this. Bitch, like, you know he did this. Like, the, like, only, the only leeway I could probably say, like, like, to say that the reason why these things happen so much... Especially during those times where you had like Dahmers and Bundys and John Wayne Gacy's and all those crazy motherfuckers, uh-huh. a lot of them already started off in life fucked up. Like dad was abusive, alcohol beating the shit out of mom didn't give a fuck about mm-hmm. them. They would kick them out constantly. They were they were secluded from everybody because they thought they they didn't know how to make friends. They didn't know how to engage. They got bullied a lot. Mm-hmm. They got their ass beat. Mm-hmm. They would get jumped and ridiculed and. All the building up, all this anger and frustration, and hate for the world. You you try to go for a job and they won't hire you because mm-hmm. you try to you trying to better your life. Oh, you can't join the military because you're you're dumb. You can't work at this job because we you're not a good fit. You 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 just get this constant negativity in your life that it might drove drive you mad after a certain amount of time. That's like mm-hmm. you know what, fuck this world. I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking leave with I'm gonna leave this shit and I'm gonna leave with a fuck a band. I'm taking some lives with me. Mm-hmm. Or you, do, or, or you turn out to be the best person in the world because you don't want somebody else to have to go through what you went through. Mm-hmm. And those are the better stories that I like to hear. Yes, I like to hear the. And, and, that, and those are the ones that are not that are not famous. That are not famous. That are not known. Only the killers are famous. Only the killers are known. Yep. Not the people that went through it. And, well, not nah, bullshit. 
Because we get the Richard Pryors. Hmm. Richard Pryor went through some shit. His mom was, his grandma was a pimp. I mean, yeah, his grandma hmm. was a madam. His grandma was a madam, and I think his, I think. His, I wish my grandma was a madam. Yeah, I think his grandma <laughs> and his uncle or some shit like that. Like he grew up in a whorehouse, mm. Richard Pryor. You know what I mean? And look what he gave us. He mm. gave us beautiful comedy. You know, like I do, I do believe that hardship. You know, pressure does make diamonds mm. too. But yo, nurture your kids, man. Take care of your fucking kids. Nurture your fucking kids. Take care of your kids. We don't want to leave music. We don't. We don't want to have. Another Aaliyah. We don't want no more R. Kellys out in this world. We don't want no we don't, to touch our beautiful Aaliyahs in don't this world. Don't touch our kids. I'll fucking kill, I'll kill you, yo. I'll pull a Joey Diaz and I'll, fuck, I'll put a dollar on a string and I'll see you in the park as a pedophile and I'll reel you in close. And then Richie Yo-Yo's will grab you and throw you in the van and we're going to leave why, you. Why I got to get involved with you? Nah, you involved, B. It's accessory. Yes. Oh, you're a shout out to Bronx Crypto and the IG. Yo, yo, it's crazy. Hey, so. yo, so um, not to leave music, what you think about this Kendrick information? Honestly, I don't I know, care. I know, I know. Me neither. I don't care because I've never like people are like Kendrick's it, not a big deal for me, Rich. Like I respect I everything Kendrick's Kim done. Man. Like I love Good Kid, Mad City. I didn't really like To Pimp a Butterfly a bunch, even though that was like more of a story uh -huh. album. There's some joints I do like on there, but I like the Good Kid, Mad City more. And then you know he did Damn, which was a landmark album for him because I think that was like his most. I think that's that it's still on the Billboard 200, and that shit came out like almost three years ago. Mm -hmm. That's how I mean I love that album like the Element well yeah, he had um be hum humble on that mm -hmm. it was very beautiful album but you know he's been with this label I think is it seventeen years like he's just he's I think he's starting his own thing called PG Lang I don't know I don't, don't know this sound don't this sound familiar with who don't this sound familiar didn't Pac excuse me didn't Pac want to leave Death Row and start his label didn't 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 pun I mean not not didn't pun didn't um but Pun did too, though. Pun wanted to leave um, Terror Squad and start his own label, and that's known by people. Didn't Biggie wanted to leave Bad Boy and start his own label? Did, did he? I don't know about that Biggie, but I know, I know. But don't what happens when people try to leave their label? But I think it's like he. I think it was more a contract fulfillment because I think it's like he had to do a certain amount of albums and then he could leave, and then I of guess course, that. Like I, so I think like. Okay, this is my last one for TD. Now I can go do my own thing. That's how I see it. It's like, and he gave 17 years. Like, they still had J Rock. They still had Schoolboy Q. They still got Isaiah Rashad, SZA. And they have a whole bunch of new artists. Like, they're trying to push now, like this one named Sir. Sir's a great artist. Shout out to Sir's. Sir's a, Sir's a dope artist. I don't, but I don't find, but I don't find. It was first J Rock before Kendrick Ken Lamar. But I don't find Kendrick. I don't. Yo, not to say Kendrick's not dope. I'm not saying Kendrick's not dope, guys. He's just more different than most it's not rappers even different. out there. He ain't even active. He ain't even active. You wanna, yo, J. How active does an artist need to be? Get the fuck out of here, yo. When J. When 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 the locks was on their run, right? When <laughs> when the locks from '95. Let's just say '95 after they left Bad Boy. No, let's go to the second. We are the streets. From the time where we are the streets was Styles P must have had about four mixtapes. Phantom Menace, gang, Super uh, Gang, su uh, Super Gangster Extraordinary Gentleman. He had he had yo. He must have had about 40, 50 different tracks in the streets. Oh, right? you're gonna be mad at Jadakiss, this comment. Jada Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> you got me mad at this guy. But Not why? This is at least Kendrick got bars and flow compared to Lil Baby and the Baby and all the other babies. Nah, yo, but nah, you're, you're, having, <laughs> yeah, you're, having, you're having two different conversations. I'm not comparing him Kendrick to. Kendrick made money. Well, you know what I'm comparing him to? I'm comparing him to top five, top five, top five, top five. And what I'm saying is, in order to be top five, top five, top five, top five, now, right now, nigga, he ain't even active. The only thing you ever hear about Kendrick is his name in the tabloid. He makes no music. All he does is put out an album every what? When's the last album? But J. Cole album? does that kind of too. Nigga, but I don't put J. Cole in top five neither though. <laughs> I don't put... You, you know why? Because they don't... They, like, top five right now? I, yo, just even... Well, I, top five all time. My nigga, I don't know if he be... I don't even know. He, he, he might put... I don't know, B. I, I really don't know because... think I, For me, you have to drop. You have to drop music. I come from an era where it's the it was the mixtape era, and niggas was throwing bars out for free. Where niggas was just getting on other, uh, oh, damn, I got dropped. People were just rappers were just getting on other people's on um, tracks just because they got skill and they wanted to and show off. They wanted to show yo, my bars are better than your bars. Not always about making like the greatest music in the world, but you're a rapper. You come from a place of being in an arena with lions, tigers, and jungles. Like you, you, you come from an what, arena like that. What I kind of hate now, especially with everything so polished and no, perfect. Like it's more like, like rappers feel they they 
they don't need to rap like hip hop artists like like when you see like the double self fresh you just say like no when you see I double mean, you're right but when you see your statement when you see rappers don't need to rap no like when you see like the double self freshmen yeah some of them don't even participate in it and they got chosen of course i'm like you do a freestyle like you're a fucking rapper you should be able to freestyle or even make some shit up in your head and just rap it and then they're like oh no i don't want to be a part I, of that when i saw designer on the freshman freestyle timmy timmy I, timmy turn no, no, he no. Wait, full he repeated the same thing like four uh, times. He wouldn't. He did it. something. No, no, no. He literally repeated the same eight bars of Satan. Not like. And then he made it a song, and he became a hit. Oh my god! <laughs> and I get it, yo. I I know money. I know money. Also, but where's he at now? What? Well, where's he at now? He just dropped a single like two weeks ago. It's nothing. But who 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 knows? And who what? knows? Who's talking about it? No, nobody. Because it's whack. <laughs> But isn't that my point though? Aren't you aren't you raising my point though? Like I said, the oh. state. He says, it's true, he hasn't dropped anything. And then he said, who is top five? And then another dude says, measure. Kendrick is masterful, but I don't gravitate towards his choice of music. Nah, because Real Street, Real Street, I'll start from the bottom up. Real Street, Real real people that come from the era I come from, we come from, nigga, we come from the mixtape era. We come from 50 Cent and fucking G-Unit being all over the mixtapes. We come from D-Block mixtapes. We come from, yo, we come from these people giving us bars as throwaways. To prove that they got the best bars. Yo, mad. we come from a place where where bars were repeated and it was still hard on another beat. I, I mean, people used to take freestyles from one beat and throw it on another beat and it was still hard. How could you make that happen? My point is, is that they don't... And who would be my top five? Honestly, right now... Um, or at least get void. X is dead. So I can't, I can't rest in peace X, to X. X, 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 Tashion, top oh, five? Oh, hell no. DMX, nigga. Don't disrespect the my fuck with fucking you. shit. Yo, yeah. <laughs> this thing is crazy. <laughs> yeah, but I, I get into Tentacion, though. T- 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 he's not a bad artist. If he had more time, yeah, he would have been in the kids' top five. Mm. But my, my, again, genres of music, different layers, different times. He didn't he actually just went, he just went 10 times platinum with. Nigga, he's a, no, he makes awesome music. I can't yeah. take shit away from him. But you know what, my nigga? Drake ain't even a rapper and I put him in my top five. That's how bad. That's how bad I fucking hate this rap game right now. That you it's love so Drake. hard to determine, my nigga. You have to drop all the time. Niggas and bitches should like your music. There should be bitches and niggas spitting your bars. And not only that, yo, they should be able to they should be able to know your shit off resignance. Yo, you can almost hear a song from somebody and just repeat their verse. I think that's when you could be declared top five. <laughs> Who's top five now? Such a hard question. Uh it's an impossible no, question because everybody's top five is different. What? It's not even only that. I think about. I, th- I, th- I, th- I won't say now. I'll say. I'll say top five general. Top five in general. Top five. Off top. I top off topic with this a little bit. Go. Top five is an actual rapper from Canada, and he must make money he, off of that name. He's a murder. He's a murderer. He's like a convict. He's like. I think he has like an allegation <laughs> against him that he killed people. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a legitimate rapper named Top Five, and he's like he killed somebody. I know, but you be dropping this random knowledge. <laughs> no, I, I'm on the internet way too long. Like, I, I told you, I'm in my house all day. I got to be on the internet just look at this shit. <laughs> I'll be in my fucking bed like, oh, shit, talk, this is murder? Cool. <laughs> not, I'm not cool with murder, by the way. All right, I'm talking rappers now. I'm talking Nod, rappers Nod now. Nods is more active I got, than Jay-Z. I got my top five. Nods is more active five. than, this guy says Nods is more active than Jay-Z. Nods is more active than Jay-Z. <laughs> Over the past couple years, yeah. Mm-hmm. But when Nas and Jay Z, let me tell when when Nas and Jay Z were dropping at the same time, Jay Z was more active than Nas. And then he fake retired. And, reti- and then he fake retired. And when then Nas and Jay Z were dropping at the same time. Jay Z had Rockefeller Records, right? Jay Z was Nas had the Bra- Nas had the Bravehearts. Where did the Bravehearts go? Uch- at the Uchi Wallow, I don't know. Where, where did the Bravehearts <laughs> go? My my point is that Jay Z's been more active his whole career. When you compare the two, yeah, Nas and shit. You know why Nas and shit is hot now? Shout out to Hip Boy, cause Nas can't find his beats, make his beats, or choose his beats if his life depended on it. If it wasn't for Hip Boy, Nas wouldn't be out right now, and that's just a fact. Like, not and this, is a, and this is a Queens nigga talking about this. Come on, give me a give me a break. When we heard the when Nas came out with the the, the uh, uh, Queensbridge Tales, there was like two three songs on that was hot. After he came up with Hit Boy right after, Nas has been dope. And got a Grammy. Nas has been, well, he deserves that. Top five now, though. Top five now. Top rappers. 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 Not, not top and, five. The not, rap, not, not in the any rapper order. top not five. Not in any order. Not in any order. Not in any order. Not in any order. But I will stay Styles P. Been coming out with two albums a year for the past fucking three years. Four oh, yeah. years. 40-year-old man. Yes, I will stay Styles P. 
Um, not in any order. Not in any order. Uh, and um, and I, what I learned about that actually, like from like all these verses for all these older artists, like you know, people most of them are like in their early forties, like mid forties. And you know what? A lot of them still rap like they just started. They still got that breath control. They got that energy. It's like so. It shouldn't matter how fucking old you are nah, when it comes you know, to you your my presence man, and shit. My man measure. My man measures forty. My man measured murder stage and murder Mike. My man Mac Mo. I got a lot of veterans around me. That's why. That's why when I when MCs, I MCs. That's what he said. When I speak about Eminem, all over the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. Eminem definitely in my top five. De- Eminem's Eminem, in my top five. Ever, and and when I say active, I mean over the past like. Five years because nobody freestyles and gets on shit no more. But believe it or not, you know who's even creeping into my top five? Tory's even creeping into my top five. Tory Lane. Cause Joyner Lucas is creeping into my top five. Mm. Cause this is where this is where music. Yo, they, some people are saying Biggie shouldn't be in the top five no more. Some people mm. saying Tupac shouldn't be in the top five no more. Mm. They they're dead and gone. You shouldn't consider them anymore. Now, when you talk about top five, you talk about now. Over the past ten years, who got the best like, rapping bars? When I when I look at actually that debate when it comes to like Biggie and Tupac, it's like you gotta remember, they both been dead since like 96, at, at 97. 90, 96 and ninety seven. Twenty plus years. And it's like twenty five. Biggie years. only dropped like two albums while he was Pac dropped alive. ten. <laughs> Pop dropped well after he after that's after he died. That's after he died too. Oh my god! But, so it's like he it's like. It's it's like a weird debate because it's like for the artists that like for like Jay Z for example uh-huh. he dropped like what like thirteen albums uh-huh. and Biggie only DMX dropped two dropped ten too G- DMX dropped like ten and it's like is DMX in the top five it's like yeah. he has a lot more body He's of dead. work that's why I don't do it I don't I, I'm I'm not letting I'm not I'm not gonna I, it's hard to include people that are dead in top five you know why because the dead people are the top five I don't give a fuck what anybody says in hip hop. Pun, Biggie, Pac, Big L. The dead people are the top five. You know what I mean? Like, the people that have passed away really... DMX. You know, when you think about that, you could probably take the best styles in hip-hop and fit them into any of those, like a sandwich. Nigga, between the drugs, the violence, the street shit, the style, the clothing, it fell in it fell in between all those artists that have passed away. Hmm. Can't be in Go Talk, bring... Can't be in, talk, can't be in Go Talk, biting other r- rappers, though. Ah, uh, nah, not not necessarily. Why not? Toast to the freestylers. The best, the best, the best, the best. Form Come on. Of, what is it? The best form of the best form of um, the best form of um. Appreciation is is flattery. Imitation. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. There you go. Like you, when you think about it, everything that we do now is because we learn. So you can't even say that. If I become the strongest runner in the world, it's because I was watching people run on TV, or I was running from the cops. But I was watching people run on TV all my life. You know what I mean? So I wanted to emulate them. Obviously, when you want to emulate something, I'm kind of tipsy. You become from one beer. You always get tipsy from one beer. When you try to emulate something, you try to be better than it. You need things. You need to see things before in order to be better than what things are. It's just a fact. You know what I mean? It's not imitation. It's just real. Uh, but it's a damn th- on, that 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 took now? a whole skew for TDE right there. What you want now, yo? Uh, but we, I wanted to talk about Biden in Afghanistan. Now, well, since we're on hip hop, I want to talk about the battle raps I just saw last night. Oh yeah, that so, I, I'm I'm well, I'm not removed from battle rap, but you would know more than me because well, I didn't watch it. Yeah, well, uh, first and foremost, yo, the battle raps were dope last night. Shout out to URL, URL, yo. They've been around forever. Well, yo, from Smack, and and I like it because mm. all the veteran rappers talk hella shit. They. They they always use Smack's name, King of the Dot, or say how they make more money, or say how they yo they you know they always because they've been there so long, so they know all the history. Do you remember seeing the dude on TV with the braids, mm. watching people battle at night, twelve one in the morning yep. on TV? Remember that? Yep. Remember these DVDs, nigga? Like they've come a long way. And now I'm watching the battles last night. One thing I will say is um shout out to all these new battle rappers, bro. Like you can tell that they're all a whole bunch of. They, they're, they're, they're an element of all the old battle rappers. You hear the K shines in them. You hear the DNAs in them. You, you hear their styles, and you're like, mm. oh shit! Like off topic a little bit. Speaking yeah. of shines back in New York, who shine? Shine? Yes, the rapper shine. How? I thought he was. Ex- did he? Did he bring him back from New York for a day? He was at some event with Fat Joe. No, no, not the day. He brought him back for like a while. Like I think Diddy and Shine are trying to work on some shit after all this time. <laughs> 
Get out of here. Yo, man. he's back in New York. And mind you, he I was banned from I coming to the country. I don't need Sean giving me no fucking religious bars out here. I don't. I don't. I don't. He, he sounded like Biggie coming up. I, yeah, he sounded like Biggie coming <laughs> up. the fuck with you? I don't know. And then you're messing with Diddy now? What you going to do? What, what kind of shit you going to give him? Shout out to Neptune, my brother. I miss you. Yo, LFG, Gotta get what up, up, soon. what up? But yeah, yo, one thing I did notice about the battle rappers last night is that um, they they like I said, all these all these new names, all these new dudes. Like shout out to J yo, there's this battle rapper called J Two, yo, he's a gay battle rapper and he's the most amazing battle rapper I've ever seen, my nigga. But he he really he really talk that shit, and he, and he walk around like it's awkward and shit. Don't think because I don't talk no dick, you won't get shot up here in the stage. Yo, nah. he got this crazy haircut with a line in it. He's sure yo, his stage presence. He, yo, last night I was enamored. I was like, and then the guy who was battling tried to come with some gay lines and shit. But then the nigga was just, it was just like bouncing like glue. It was just like I was like, wow. You got to send me that link. A gay I rapper was like, winning. Wow. He, but he's so talented in his presence, and that's why I said shout out to all these new artists, like all these new battle rappers, because this is what I expect to be seeing over next year, next summer. You can't always have the kings of what they do, right? No, it gets... Kings die. Kings disappear. It gets too stable. You need some fucking new shit, like yep. some fresh. Yep. And if you're telling me this this gay battle rapper is like killing, yo, like murdering monster. motherfuckers? Yo, J2 was a monster last. I was like, wow. There was a couple other people that were, that were great, but he stood out to me the most. He stood out to me the most. Oh, speaking of, I need to... Thoughts on the upcoming Kendrick album? I mean, we kind of already discussed it a little bit. I mean, I, 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 mean, honest, I don't know how it's going to be. I, 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 I'm always open to great music. I just wish I people like man, they did it with Dre, right? Like I mean, like you only have sometimes you only have to drop one album I'm to be considered the I'm greatest. I'm still waiting on Detox. Yeah, but <laughs> look at Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy did Raw and Delirious, and he's still considered one of the greatest stand-up comedians of all time. Sometimes maybe you only have to do things right the first time. Yep, and and just you know if you do it again, it won't have that. That Masterful the full impact yep. effect. I told you all. I need, all you need is that one album. Like, like I'm working on. I'm working on a masterful album. So be prepared for that, people. Facts. So it's in the works. That's gonna be my illmatic. <laughs> Not, but that, but that maybe that's maybe that's what the point that I'm missing. That if you do it right the Excuse first me. time, you don't have to necessarily do it again at all the second time. Them new battle rappers are all sons of New Jersey twerk. Uh yes and no. I, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna lie. I hear a lot of everybody in them though. I hear a lot of all, all the different styles. Like, all the, it's just, like I said, it sucks when kings die. I watch UFC, right? So when I watch UFC and I see my older fighters, 38, 39, 40 years old, and then when you see him get knocked in the jaw by some 25 year old and get dropped, put to sleep, you feel hella bad. You're like, damn, I hope he don't get in there again. But when you think about the times where he was exciting you in his moment, it's gonna be a sad day. It's gonna be a sad day when, like, Jay Z truly walks away from hip hop, and you never get nothing from him again. Mm. It's a sad day when you know. It's a sad day when you don't get the things that you you really when kings mm. die. That's why I say I like the new battle rappers because they uh, they're gonna get better. How about this thought on most music nowadays not sounding different or new? I mean, that's just this is how hip hop is. That's like, that T Pain comment. You know, she's going off that T Pain comment. Yeah, right? uh, like T Pain think? ranted. You you saw the rant? Yeah, I saw the rant. Stop yeah. making the same business, everybody! Else. We already got babies. We got the baby. <laughs> but it's like that's that's how hip hop is. It just evolves into the next generation, and it just keeps transcending time. Like when you hear like current music, like with like rock and roll and like most pop music, it's usually stagnant. It's not that much change. But with hip hop, it just diversifies into like you get the you get like the eighties rap. Like hey, get my body, I'm chilling in the cut, and then you'll get like the. In the nineties, you get like the big L's and like, like fuck all the glamours and glitz. I plan to get rich yep. from New York. Never was a fan of the Knicks. Ooh. And I'm all about expanding my chits. Yeah. You mad because I was in the van with your bitch with Talk both hands on the tits? Like yo, that's fucking. That's the nineties. Then you get the twenties where you get the fucking the trill shit. Like what is you? What's up? And then like you go to the twenty tens where you get like some of the like the auto tune rap motherfuckers. Like na 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 na. Can, I think, I think that the, it may be our. I think it may be our handoff of what hip hop is, though. Think about this: hip hop is the most spread out genre there is, right? Hmm. You, they take. Come on, Maroon Five. They, they'll take the fu They take Future. They take Kendrick. They take. They take um Megan The Stallion. You know what I mean? Like, think about Justin Bieber. How many hip hop artists he mess with? You know, think I think hip hop is the most spread apart genre of music there is, and 
maybe the problem with since we got so spread out and we're everywhere, like I hate the word urban, but urban is everywhere, right? The handoff and the trade off of that is that it may become repetitive in itself with what it actually is. Because it don't sound repetitive when it gets put somewhere else. We take hip hop and you take a pop song, take a hip hop artist and a pop guy, look at Cardi. Hmm. It don't get repetitive. But if Cardi keeps making the same Cardi music, I'm like, Cardi sounds the same. You know, so I think it's just the trade off that we get being everywhere. Yep. Being everywhere, the trade off is that we sound the same. Well, and I shouldn't say we, because I give you a whole slew of artists, you can click on my fucking link in bio, his link in bio, that do not sound the same. They don't sound the same, they have all different sounds, it's just, the machine is a bitch. And where the machine puts you is the where your ceiling is, so to speak, unless you're looking to put in that work, and be a Freddie Gibbs, and at every show sell your merch. Or be a fucking Richard Picasso and put a fucking onesie on while you're fucking yo-yoing. You know what I mean? Stepping out of the box doing these things. Right. Unless you're willing to put in some groundwork, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, you ain't getting fucking nowhere. Speaking of what groundwork, right. bro, let's welcome out with fucking uh, Biden and this fucking right. one, crazy... One last comment for this dude. So yeah, but there's a difference between mediocre music and talented artists. I feel like nowadays everyone wants to easily be an artist. I'm like, yeah, everybody wants to easily be an artist. But you know what the, the difference between... A mediocre, mediocre music and a talented artist is budget. Oh, budget, yeah. If you ain't got the money to be pushing out shitty music, how are you gonna get known? You need money to fucking push some shit out. You just can't put it up on like SoundCloud and think everybody's gonna run to it and hear it. I I, I agree with you because money's always money's always the biggest issue. But I, you know, I think I think the biggest issue is too though, like. That's your determination to make what is mediocre and what isn't mediocre. You know, at that point in time, at, at that point in time, I guess it all it all falls on the fan. You know, if enough mm -hmm. people like something, if, like it, it can't be that bad. Mm -hmm. It can't be that bad if enough people like something, and if not, then they're all fucking brainwashed. That just mm -hmm. we're all brain. You know, it's just it's so hard. Music music is a place where any anybody should feel safe in whatever their opinion is on what choice of music they choose to like. If you choose to like left, right, up, down, music is a place where you can choose to like anything. And if it sounds drowned out to anybody, then go find some fucking music that isn't drowned out to you. There's music everywhere. There's all different types of music. It's just you wanting to find it. And what gets pushed into your ears is something to be upset about. Absolutely. Because when I turn on the radio and within an hour I heard the same Pop Smoke song four times on eight different radio stations, it's murder. No mm. pun intended. You know what I mean? Like, but dead ass. Murder. But dead ass. You know, like, I understand that, but then go find some good music to listen to because there's a whole fucking dictionary there. Hmm. It's on you if you haven't found nothing good to listen to. Straight up. And if not, then go tap into my Spotify, bitch. I'm only playing. <laughs> right. you, know, you do need a lot of money for this industry. It's crazy, but, you know. T Pain said 200 grand. T Pain went on Drink Champs at 200 grand. 200 grand to push a single for that single to be something. If not, you start off small, and then you keep feeding the machine little by little, and you watch it grow organically. And he said, that's how you create a classic. You understand me? You don't create a classic by putting 200 grand into a song, it blows up for a year, and then it's gone, and never want to hear it again. You go ahead, and you nurture the fucking song, and now people, it's undeniable. Everywhere you go, yo, I heard that, I heard that, I heard that. that that's, that's what you're supposed to do. But he said 200 grand. 200 grand gets your song with those things. T Pain, he would know best. Yes, T Pain, T Pain's the goat. <laughs> I, I don't got a picture for this fucking presidential shit, but what's your opinion on it? What do you think is going on with this Afghanistan see, shit? Biden in Afghanistan, um, pulling out of Afghanistan after almost twenty yeah, years. Mom, yo, Biden's mom should have pulled out. Biden's father should have pulled out when they had him. Why he's you say that? Straight bars, B. Why? Why? Because he's a shit president. He looks like the cousin of Tales from the Crypt. He might be the same fucking guy. And I haven't seen that guy on TV in years. He slurs his words. His backup is a woman that puts innocent, leaves innocent people in jail. I don't understand. Yo, that nigga's so old that if somebody came up in the street and went, he might fall apart and shit. He's all fucking brittle, bro. How you gonna have this as a president? He's fucking brittle, bro. He's brittle. He's brittle. He's frail, bro. If I spit on him, he might just fall apart, bro. How you gonna have a man like that? He fell walking up Air Force One, the 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 jet that the 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 PJ that hey, look I, I look the I the United States he look, busted his look, ass. Like I fell up the stairs a couple times. <laughs> no, but he fell like three times. He couldn't pick him shit up. I felt probably worse than that. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. But you got your own issues. <laughs>
I'm already, I already have a fucked up like right foot that that just has a mind of its own. It'll like go anywhere it wants. It'll, sometimes it'll trip my ass for like, no reason. Issues. But yeah, you, what you think about Biden? I don't man? know for like this whole thing moving out, like for fucking Bush to kind of like kind of pretty much start the whole shit with like moving into the country, finding weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that were never there. And then Obama trying to oh, didn't you know, do you shit. Gotta start, you got to start. You got to start. You got to start from where it originally you gotta, you came gotta, from. You got to start when we first had these deals with them. With the, yeah. With the oh, 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 what was it? With the fucking um. When we first started, when we first started selling them guns to fucking do the war. Oh, man, yo, it's crazy. Then you had Desert Storm. Yep. Where we're protect, and then you had 9/11 where we're protecting their poppy fields. Yep. Think about how much time we've been spending over there. Hmm. Oh, the Iran Contra trade. You know mm-hmm. what the Iran Contra trade is? No. All right, Iran Contra trade is where we were selling guns to Iran, right? If I'm not mistaken, we were selling guns to Iran, and we were using that money to purchase drugs from to purchase drugs from um, South America to help them with the war when Noriega was in um, presidency in Panama. Mm. Iran Contra. You feel me? This this is why like our our, our CIA and our government is so. F- Fucked up because now you want to pull out of a country hmm. that you've been in helping, giving support. You've been helping, giving them support with your own agenda. Now you're just going to leave these people. What happens every time we leave them? You get the 1992 bombing. What happens every time we leave them? Oklahoma City you bombing. Get the fucking, uh, no, Oklahoma City was us. Hmm. That was tech, tech, oh, yeah. That was us. Timothy that, that, that was that was on that was on that was us. Hmm. But you get you get you know you get that bombing. What happens? You get you get 9/11. When you leave these motherfuckers alone and you don't monitor them, they... And when I say motherfuckers, I mean you bad people. I don't give a fuck about race or religion. I mean you bad people that are trying to do bad things. You leave a bad person alone, he's going to get a chance to do a bad thing. Why would us as America and a nation and Joe Biden be like, Yo, we got to pull out because there's too many people there on my side. Nigga, that's Joe Biden, B. <laughs> I mean, I... Mean, I- I understand why. I, as I said, I understand why he's pulling like troops out of Afghanistan because it's been it's been an ongoing war for almost twenty years. There's people that's been there probably since like Bush started this shit, and they're like, "Yo, why the fuck are we? Why the fuck are we like still here? Like fight for what? What's here that we need to do? Oh, the Taliban? Because you know it's like the Taliban started like really moving in. They took I think they took control of like like four or five like cities, mm-hmm. and like everybody's every fucking refugee trying to run to the like a U.S. airport trying to get on those giant characters. They said there was 75,000 Taliban and 325,000 other other motherfuckers, plus United States there. How the hell does 75 take over 325? I don't... And and America's there? Mm. So what, America took a loss too? Or did we just bow down gracefully and be like, before this gets out of hand, let's just go? Mm. I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. We've never been, we've never mm. not helped a nation, right? This is what we do. Hmm. But now we made the choice not to, to just pull out and leave them there. Mm. I don't know. I feel like there's a more bigger pressing issue that he's like worried that will happen. Like if we, the reason why he's pulling it out, there has to be some type of reason for it. And then there's like, you know, the opposing side saying like, oh, we can't, we can't leave because look what the fuck's happening as we're trying to leave right now. But you know, we we have to see how things develop as the months, like well, the weeks and the months go on because it's been absolutely crazy and it's insane. Because all I'm seeing, you saw the niggas uh, falling out the plane. Yo, that shit was. I think one person, like like a famous, not famous, like Afghan, like soccer player, died because he held on for like a mad long time, and then he because fucking he fell to his death. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yo, it's it's fucking crazy. Yo, yo, I don't mean to laugh, but yo. There has to be a better way than going on a plane that's going up in the sky. You know how fast a plane is? You know what I'm saying? There has to be a better way than you thinking you're going to... Like, I don't know. It's fucked up, but it's like, rest in peace to that guy, but damn. Yeah, I don't mean... I laugh because I think he's in heaven laughing. I think... It's like, why did I do that? We're we're like, yeah, like with 99 versions, whatever, whatever y'all think. 72 versions. 99 is being generous. (laughs) I say 99. But like whatever, yo, whatever it may be. Ninety nine birds is in my dick is one. No. <laughs> I'm stupid. Yeah, no, nah, but it's true. Whatever, whatever it may be, uh, you must be laughing at yourself at that point. Like that has to be mm. an easier way. All right. You see what Kim Jong Un did? He got bombs near the border. He won't let no Koreans out. If you try to go out, then they gonna blow your ass up. 
Well, he's a dictator. That's what they do. They like Bro, they want to show off their strength. Go in and get him, China. <laughs> China's protecting North Korea. Be bleeding shit. Be. For reasons I don't know. And they're a very isolated country. They they have no like contact with the outside world like nah, that. Nah, yo, it's it's fucking crazy. People are starving. You can actually go there if you're a journalist. If you got like some, nigga, uh, you know, you could go if you're Dennis Rodman too. I wish I was Jim. De- Dennis shit. Rodman's best friends with the nigga. Hell yeah, I'll be like, yo, what's good, Nick? Nah, fuck it. Give me some North Korean bitches. Let's go. <laughs> you don't want them bitches. They weigh like 90 pounds. They're all malnourished. I'll bring them food. This nigga, walk them out. <laughs> all right. Walk them out. Walk them out. You can stay on the live and right. over there. All right, walk so, them out. All right, I know we have like other topics. I see people talking about like the whole vaccine thing here, but. Yeah, yo, you want to hit that up? We hit that up last week. Yeah, we, we kind of hit it up last week, but it's pretty much, you know. Hey, look, you want to keep your job, get the vaccine. If you don't, they're... Nah, that's bullshit. <laughs> nah, that's bullshit. SMD, that's bullshit. That's against... That's totally against human rights to say, yo, that's discrimination against. Yo, hold up. Hold up. That's like Hooters telling me I can't work in Hooters because I don't got Hooters. You understand me? Well, I, I, I have to be... I have to be vaccinated to... Yo, next, my nigga, you're not going to be able to walk outside. But but how many men are signing up for Hooters? What? <laughs> how many men are trying to be Hooters waitresses? Nigga, but my point that is discrimination against. All right, better. It's, 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 like saying, it's like saying because I'm Puerto Rican, I can't work in a building. Mm. It's like saying I'm, because I'm unvaccinated, I can't work here. And now they're forcing city workers. Think about this. Mm. They're forcing mm. city workers. They're forcing you. If you work for the city. He's mad. If you work because that's, you shouldn't, you should, you're not, wait, they don't force people to get a flu shot and flu shot kills, killed more people than this shit. So you're, they're forcing people to do a vaccine. They, yo, and then they do the stupidest thing. They're giving you free donuts if you get a vaccine. Mm. A donut isn't healthy. Why would you give somebody a fucking free donut? 70% of niggas are obese. And, and I don't understand. This propaganda is backwards, Rich. How do you not see it? Huh. And they always say, I'll show you you can't work if you're not vaxxed. Don't nope. get arrested if they catch you without a mask. Thank God. But we're, not in, but we're not in Australia, so... But well, Australia nothing. is really bad. It's, it's super bad over there. The lockdown is crazy over there. And, and, and this is my point, that I don't know how bad it is, but to a certain extent, come on, isn't this a little bit ridiculous now? Out of all the out of all the states, New New York State, you have to wear a, you have to have a vaccine card to go into fucking certain places now or work be a city worker. What this is kind of weird, B. And then who's it coming from? Dick Blasio. You understand? The guy's almost coming out of office. He's absolutely ruined everything, including our education system. And now he's trying to kill small businesses again by not allowing people to dine in unless you have a vaccine. He's the worst fucking. What is he? A mayor? He's yeah. the worst fucking mayor we've ever had. And I'm supposed to be okay. Over oh, Giuliani? Nah, Gi- Giuliani, yo, for the streets, for Giuliani lost his mind. Mm. But for, for the streets, you gotta remember, Giuliani cleaned up the mafia. Mm. Giuliani, you know, Giuliani did, he cleaned up New York. Giuliani got sanitation on track. New York used to be a nasty, shitty place. You know, like, I, I certain things that I know of, nasty culture I don't like, but certain things I know of, I'll give you credit for. Dick Blasio, I know you for nothing since I've since you've been in office for fucking things up. All you do is fuck things up. How he got in office is that he used his fucking black son with an afro to show that he was. Come on, dude. Come on. You couldn't have no more propaganda than that. You understand? Mm-hmm. With your fucking Brooklyn brownstone thinking we're gonna vote for you, and that's why he got in office. Because people felt more and look what he's done. He's fucked shit up since he's been there. Mm. Now you gotta wear a mask, nigga, or have a vaccine. No, you gotta have a vaccine card to go in somewhere. But what's the point of having the mask then? <sighs> See what I'm saying? Go ahead, Rich. Walk him out. Damn. Well, That's why you can't start it up, nigga. Sorry, I you can't start it up because well, well, the batteries are good. No, I go for that. another two hours. All right, we're done. We're here. Thank you. <laughs> I go for the, I'll play this shit. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for everybody tuning in on the IG Live. You know... Thank you for everybody tuning in on, you know, if you're watching from YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch, wherever you're watching this from. Facts. We appreciate it. We're going to try to be live Yo, more this often. Shit's going, this shit's going for longer. Last time it was like an hour and 20, now it's fucking hour and 30. Like, yeah, because now we have topics and a lot of crazy shit's been going on in the world that we have to talk about. So, like yeah, th- talk thank about. you all so much for tuning in. We greatly appreciate your time, you know. Hey. If you have any other questions, just please leave it in the comments. We'll try to be respond. If you... Tune in next week. We're going to try to do this more often. I'm Richard Picasso. This is Out of Character. Peace, love, and yo-yos, everybody. Everybody on the live, thank you very much. Thank